the end of the Qing Dynasty, Part 2, The Internal Rebellions, Section E, The Panthe Rebellion. The Panthe Rebellion, from 1856 to 1873, known to the Chinese as the Du Wangshu Rebellion, was a rebellion of the Muslim Hui people and other ethnic groups against the Manchu rulers of the Qing Dynasty in southwestern Yunnan province as part of a wave of Hui-led multi-ethnic unrest. The name Panthe is a Burmese word which is said to be identical to the Shan word Pang Xie. It was the name that Burmese called the Chinese Muslims who came with caravans to Burma from the Chinese province of Yunnan. The name was not used or known in Yunnan itself. Causes Discrimination by China's imperial administration against the Hui caused their rebellions, although some sources suggest that the Panthe Rebellion originated solely as a conflict between Han and Hui miners in 1853, Han-Hui tensions had existed for decades prior to the event, including a three-day massacre of Hui by Han and Qing officials in 1845. Hui and Han were regarded and classified by Qing as two different ethnic groups, with Hui not regarded as an exclusively religious classification. The Encyclopedia of Religion and Ethics states that the Panthe revolt by the Muslims was set off by racial antagonism and class warfare, not just due to Islam and its drive for expansion. In 1856, a massacre of Muslims organized by a Qing Manchu official to suppress the revolt in the provincial capital of Kunming, sparked a province-wide multi-ethnic insurgency. In Dali City, in western Yunnan, an independent kingdom was established by Du Wangshu, who lived from 1823 to 1872. He was born in Yongchang to a Han Chinese family, which had converted to Islam. The Manchu official who started the anti-Muslim massacre was Shuxing A, who developed a deep hatred of Muslims after an incident where he was stripped naked and nearly lynched by a mob of Muslims. He ordered several Muslim rebels to be slowly sliced to death. Tariq Ali wrote about the real incident in one of his novels, claiming that the Muslims who had nearly lynched Xu Xing'a were not Hui Muslims, but belonged to another ethnicity. But nevertheless, the Manchu official blamed all Muslims for the incident. The revolt was not religious in nature, since the Muslims were joined by non-Muslim Shan and Kakien and other hill tribes. A British officer testified that the Muslims did not rebel for religious reasons and that the Chinese were tolerant of different religions and were unlikely to have caused the revolt by interfering with the practice of Islam. In addition, loyalist Muslim forces helped the Qing crush the rebel Muslims. Du Wangxiu was not aiming his rebellion at the Han people, but was anti-Qing and wanted to destroy the Manchu government. During the revolt, Hui from provinces which were not in rebellion, like Sichuan and Zhejiang, served as negotiators between rebel Hui and the Qing government. One of Du Wangxiu's banners said, deprive the Manchu of their mandate to rule, and he called on Han people to assist Hui people to overthrow the Manchu regime 
and drive them out of China. Du's forces led multiple non-Muslim forces, including Han Chinese, Li from Hainan Island, Bai, and Hani. Du Wingxiu also called for unity between Muslim Hui and Han. He was quoted as saying, Our army has three tasks, to drive out the Manchus, unite the Chinese, and drive out traitors. Du Wengxiu did not blame Han for the massacres of Hui, but blamed the tensions on the Manchu regime, saying that they were foreign to China and alienated the Chinese and other minorities. Du Wengxiu also called for the complete expulsion of Manchus from all of China in order for China to once again come under Chinese rule. Total war was waged against Manchu rule. Du Wangxiu refused to surrender, unlike the other Muslim commander, Ma Rulong. This may have had something to do with the sects of Islam practiced among the rebels. The Gedimu Hanafi Sunni Muslims under Ma Rulong readily defected to the Qing, while the Jariya Sufi Muslims did not surrender. Some of the Jariya rebels in the Panthe Rebellion, like Ma Sheng Lin, were related to the Dungan Revolt Jariya leader, Ma Hua Long, and maintained contact with them. The rebellion started after massacres of Hui perpetrated by the Manchu authorities. Du used anti-Manchu rhetoric in his rebellion against the Qing, calling for Han people to join the Hui to overthrow the Manchu Qing after 200 years of their rule. Du invited the fellow Hui leader Ma Rulong to join him in driving the Manchu Qing out and recover China. For his war against the Manchu oppression, Du became a Muslim hero, while Ma Rulong defected to the Qing. On multiple occasions, Kunming was attacked and sacked by Du Wengxiu's forces. His capital was Dali. The revolt ended in 1873. Du Wangxiu is regarded as a hero by the present-day government of China. Du Wangxiu wore Chinese clothing. Here are some examples of Chinese clothing. And mandated the use of the Arabic language in his regime. Du also banned pork. Ma Rulong also banned pork in areas under his control after he surrendered and joined the Qing forces. In Kunming, there was a slaughter of 3,000 Muslims on the instigation of the judicial commissioner, who was a Manchu, in 1856. Du Wengxiu was of Han Chinese origin despite being a Muslim, and he led both Hui Muslims and Han Chinese in his civil and military bureaucracy. Du Wangxiu was fought against by another Muslim leader, the defector to the Qing, Ma Rulong. The Muslim scholar Ma Dexin, who said that Neo-Confucianism was reconcilable with Islam approved of Ma Rulong defecting to the Qing, and he also assisted other Muslims in defecting. Tribal Pagan Animism Confucianism and Islam were 
all legalized and honored with the Chinese style bureaucracy in Du Wang Xu's Sultanate. A third of the Sultanate's military posts were filled with Han Chinese, who also filled the majority of civil posts. Here are the revolution slogans of Du Wang Xu. Have peace for the Han, down with Qing court. To unite Hui and Han as one. To erect flag of rebellion. To get rid of Manchu barbarians. To resurrect China. To cut away corruption. To save people from water and fire. Negotiations. Peace negotiations were held by Zhejiang and Sichuan, Hui Muslims, who were invited by the Qing to Yunnan in 1858, and they were not involved in the revolt. The course of the war. The rebellion started as widespread local uprisings in virtually every region of the province. It was the rebels in western Yunnan, under the leadership of Du Wang Xu, who, by gaining control of Da Li in 1856, which they kept until the fall, its fall in 1872, became the major military and political center of the opposition to the Qing government. They turned their fury on the local mandarins and ended up challenging the central government in Beijing. The imperial government was handicapped by a profusion of problems in various parts of the sprawling empire, the Taiping Rebellion being one of them. It was a time when China was still suffering from the shocks caused by the first series of unequal treaties, such as the Treaty of Nanking. These circumstances favored the rise of the Muslims in Yunnan. The Pacified Southern Kingdom The rebels captured the city of Dali, which became the base for their operations, and they declared themselves a separate political entity from China. The rebels identified their nation as Pingnan Guo, which means pacified southern state. Their leader was Suleiman ibn Abd al-Rahman, known as Du Wang Xu. He was titled Qu'aid Jami al muslimin leader of the community of Muslims. He was usually just referred to as Sultan and ruled from 1856 to December 26, 1872. Starting from 1855, the Hui of Yunnan had risen against the oppression to which they were subjected by the Mandarins. They rose against the tyranny and extortion universally practiced by this official class, from which they were excluded. The Mandarins had secretly hounded mobs to attack the rich Panthes, provoked anti-Hui riots, and instigated destruction of mosques. The revolt was not religious in nature, since the Muslims were joined by non-Muslim Shan, from here, and Kachin, from here, people, and other hill tribes in the revolt. A British officer testified that the Muslims did not rebel for religious reasons, and that the Chinese were tolerant of different religions and were unlikely to have caused the revolt by interfering with the practicing of Islam. In addition, loyalist Muslim forces helped Qing crush the rebel Muslims. The rebellion once again started as a local uprising. 
It was sparked off by the Pante laborers of the silver mines of Lin An village in Yunnan, who rose up against the Qing. The Chinese governor of Yunnan sent an urgent appeal to the central government in Beijing. The imperial government was handicapped by problems that cropped up in profusion in various parts of the sprawling empire. The rebels repulsed the desultory attacks of the imperial troops. They took one important city after another from the control of the imperial mandarins. The towns that resisted were pillaged and the male populations there were massacred. All the places that yielded were spared. The ancient holy city of Dali fell to the Panthes in 1857. With the capture of Dali, Muslim supremacy would become an established fact in Yunnan. The Islamic Kingdom of Yunnan was proclaimed after the fall of Talifu, which means Dali City. Du Wangxiu, leader of the Panthes, assumed the title of Sultan Suleiman and made Talifu his capital. In this way, the Sultanate, fashioned after those of the Middle East, appeared in Yunnan. Panthe governorships were also created in a few important cities, such as Momien, now Tangue or Tenchang, which was not far from the Burma town of Bano, Bamo. The Panthes reached their highest point of success in 1860. Upon taking power, Zhu Wangshu proclaimed that the Taiping will become our allies. We will help each other, and we will destroy our enemies with our combined efforts, indicating his intention to cooperate with the pseudo-Christian Taiping Rebellion, which was trying to overthrow the Qing Dynasty. The eight years from 1860 to 1868 were the heyday of the Sultanate. The Panthes had either taken or destroyed 40 towns and 100 villages. During this period, the Sultan Suleiman, on his way to Mecca as a pilgrim, visited Rangoon, probably through the Kentung route. And from there, visited further to Calcutta, where he had a chance to see the power of the British in India. Decline. The Sultanate's power declined after 1868. The Chinese imperial government had succeeded in reinvigorating itself. By 1871, it was directing a campaign for the annihilation of the rebel Hui Muslims of Yunnan. By degrees, the imperial government had tightened the cordon around the Sultanate. The Sultanate proved unstable as soon as the imperial government made a regular and determined attack on it. Town after town fell under well-organized attacks from imperial troops. Dali itself was besieged by imperial forces. The Sultan found himself caged in by the wall of his own capital. Desperately looking for outside help, he turned to the British for military assistance. He realized that only British military intervention could have saved his Sultanate. The Sultan had reasons for turning to the British. British authorities in India and British Burma had sent a mission led by Major Sladen 
to the town of Tengue in present-day Yunnan from May to July 1868. The Slayton mission had stayed seven weeks at this town, also known as Mongyan, meeting with rebel officials. The main purpose of this mission was to revive the ambassadorial route between Bamo and Yunnan and start border trade again. This had almost completely stopped since 1855 due to the rebellion. Taking advantage of the friendly relations resulting from Sladen's visit, Sultan Suleiman, in his fight for the survival of the Sultanate, turned to the British Empire for formal recognition and military assistance. In 1872, he sent his adopted son, Prince Hassan, to England with a personal letter to Queen Victoria via Burma in an attempt to obtain official recognition of the Panthai Empire as an independent power. The Hassan mission was accorded, accorded courtesy and hospitality in both British Burma and England. However, the British politely but firmly refused to intervene militarily in Yunnan against the Qings. In any case, the mission came too late. While Hassan and his party were outside of the Sultanate, Dali was captured by Imperial troops on January 1873. The Imperial government had waged an all-out war against the Sultanate with the help of French artillery experts. The ill-equipped rebels with no allies were no match for their modern equipment, trained personnel, and numerical superiority. Therefore, in less than two decades, the Panthe Sultanate rose and fell. Seeing no escape and no mercy from his relentless foes, the Sultan tried to commit suicide before the fall of Dali. However, before the opium he drank took full effect, he was beheaded by his enemies. The Sultan's body is entombed in Chiajui, outside of Dali. Manchu troops then began a massacre of the rebels. They killed thousands of civilians, sending severed ears along with the heads of their victims to Qing authorities. The Sultan's head was preserved in honey and dispatched to the Qing court in Beijing as a trophy and a testimony to the decisive nature of the victory of the Imperial Manchu Qing over the Muslims of Yunnan. The Muslim general Ma Ru Long, who betrayed the Sultan and changed sides, helped the Qing forces crush his fellow Muslim rebels. He was called Marshal Ma by, by Europeans and gained almost total control over Yunnan province after the war. A great uncle of Ma Shaowu, Ma Shanglin, defended Greater Donggu against Ma, Rulong, Ma Rulong's army. Ma Shanglin was the religious head of the Jaria Menhuang in Yunnan and a military leader. A mortar killed him in 1871. Scattered remnants of the Sultanate troops continued the resistance after the fall of Dali. But when Mongyan was next besieged and stormed by Imperial troops in May 1873, their resistance broke completely. Governor Ta Sa Kon was captured and executed by order of the Imperial government. 